Dennis, how you been? I'm good, mate. You? Yeah, very well. Keeping yourself out of trouble? Trying to, trying to. <laughs> Big Al keeping you in check, or is it the other way around? Well, he keeps me in check, he does. <laughs> he keeps me away from the Harry Bowls, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, because it's more like a sort of father-son relationship. I think you've said that in the past between you two. It's a bit of a bromance, isn't it? It's a bit of a bromance. <laughs> I've seen you before and I'm sure we'll, we'll see it again today when, you know, the a bit of cheekiness in the gym there, catching him with one after he, after, after, uh, after he's turned the other way and all that. Yeah, on your, on your, I only do it for the camera, dog. As soon, soon as no one's looking, <laughs> it, it, it gives me one back, doesn't it? We enjoy each other's company as well, so we're not, he's not just my coach, he's my friend as well. So um, I come to work for him some days, torture him some days. <laughs> um, Soon I'll, be get, I'll get a caravan when we're in his front driveway, won't I? <laughs> <laughs> so when, when did you first join up with Al? Uh, about about three years ago. Um, I, was, I was just an amateur at the time. I was in the final of the youth ABAs. Try and come in here, try and get some weight off. Um, done a little session with Al and that. I, enjoy, I enjoyed it. I come down here with Mickey Burke, Jr., who's also another good fighter, uh, Simon Frank Warren. And um, come down here with Mickey Burke and he introduced me to Al. And we kicked off ever since. Yeah, and, and, and obviously, like, as we all know, you didn't, um, you got into boxing quite early, didn't you? You didn't hang around at school too long. Yeah, yeah, I left school at uh, 10, 11, just to box. Um, I give up, yeah, give up school just to box. So I was getting three and a half hour train journeys to the gym from Birmingham to Bethnal Green uh, three to four times a week. Just because if I went to school, I wouldn't, it, the train started at five o'clock, so I couldn't go, go uh, boxing. And I wanted to go to the best gym uh, around, so I was about. I looked about, looked about minimum about four. <laughs> with a backpack in my back, bigger than me. <laughs> I was about 28 kilos getting a train to uh, the Bethnal Green, three and a half hours. Jeez, I mean that sort of that must make you've had, had like an old head on young shoulders if you no, were doing all that. No, definitely. I was very, uh, very mature as a young kid. Always was very mature. I was working since I was 10, working with my dad and that. Um, I'm very close to my dad as well. Very close. So I mean, I used to walk through him. I used to go. For, sometimes I used to go from work, uh, straight my work clothes, straight to the gym, um, and then straight back again. Then so I'd work all morning, then train, then back home. Oh, so you're working as well? What were you yeah. doing? Well, even at that age, what were you yeah, doing? Yeah. What were you doing then? I used to wear uh, like roofing and like just labouring, silly bit, bit of work really, to be honest. Well, I suppose that helps you build up the muscles as well. But to be it? honest with you, this is the God's honest truth. I was doing like stuff like um, like lifting bricks and stuff like that. I should do it for to get me stronger for strength, really. So I used to I used to want to do it uh, just to get stronger anyway. Like it's like strength conditioning kind of thing, you know what I mean? Brilliant. Do you still do that now? Or are you actually using weights these days? No, no. <laughs> I've got a strength coach now. <laughs> I can afford a strength coach now. <laughs> um, now I know you're back out on July 10 with. Uh, John Chua, I hope I pronounced that right, from Tanzania, who's um, 20 and 4, soon to be 20 and 5, I guess, if you've got anything to do with it. Definitely, 20 and 5, Wait, hopefully his nose behind his ear somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Last time out, yeah, you, you, you wanted the KO, didn't, didn't quite happen. It didn't quite happen, um, I, I hurt him a few times, dropped the kid once. He did, yeah. Uh, yeah, the kid, kick, the kick a punch through for you, the old yeah was, a, was a, probably a one punch chance, you know what I mean? So. Al told me not to take the chance, just stick to me boxing. I don't know, one every single round. Um, and uh, beat a kid with 10, well, nine, knocked out six or seven. So the kid from Mexico, I didn't know nothing about him. There was no videos about him. And I took a chance and I paid off. Yeah, and, 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 and this time, I know you said in the press conference that you definitely want to knock out this time. And if, if Big Al says anything in the corner, you're just going to pretend you didn't hear. No, I'm pretending I never heard him. <laughs> I'm, sure I'm going to attempt to speak, speak to the handmakers, the face ain't listening, so I'm going to say that. <laughs> um, also in that press conference, you said devastating performance. I think that's Daniel Dubois' catchphrase, isn't it? I've heard he's not too happy with you, Nick, in that. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I see him, I'll take off running, won't I? It's too, it's too big to have a few words with him, but um, I'm definitely coming for a, a, a big performance. I'm feeling very good, I'm sparring very well, I've had some great sparring. I uh, sparred the likes of Lee McGregor this morning and stuff like that, so who's another great fighter? Uh, I'm just learning and learning. I'm 20 years of age. I'm learning on the job every day. Yeah, um, Lee McGregor. Sorry to sort of jump in. I mean, you know, he's like British champion. Um, any chance you two could fight for real at some point? Uh, maybe down the line, yeah. But at the moment, I think he's what was a year a year ahead of me, year and a half year and a half ahead of me. So I don't think he's going to be too interested in me at the moment. He, he, he's a British Commonwealth and, and European champion. He, he'd be knocking more honours, wouldn't he? So I don't think he's too, he can be too interested in me. 
And you've also been inspired by Cash Farouk, I think, as well. I mean, it, it must be quite nice to, uh, it, I mean, it must be quite good for you to learn off these guys. Yeah, uh, mixing up with, 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 with so called the best in these. So, uh, the best in the divisions, both of them are. The two top, num number two, uh, number one and two. So, it's definitely um, it's good to get the experience and see where I'm at. And now you've got Archie here as well, who joined, joined a few months ago. I mean, obviously, he's a bit bigger than you, but do you ever, do you ever have, a, have a. Archie, there's play with Archie, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 as he gets me in the ring, he'll punch me head in. No, I'm only, jo I'm only joking. <laughs> Uh, definitely, Archie's a bit bigger than me, obviously, but um, I, I learn off him all the time as well. We learn off each other. He's a great, great fighter, Archie, and uh, definitely everyone's going to see the best of him very soon. I mean, you can, everyone can hear from all the laughing behind from everyone in it. it, it, it you, you can tell there's a good vibe about this gym. Everyone, everyone gets on with everyone. Yeah, we're like a family. We call each other the iBox family, don't we? So we're, we're all like we're all very, very close. Um, Archie's actually nice to me because he knows I dust him up all the time. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> He's half asleep, he never heard me. Oh, I'll tell you what, if it looks a good no. kill. We'll ask Archie for his side in a minute. Um, no <laughs> before we go, just want to sort of quick chat on your division. Um, Nanito Donaire, not bad performance for an old bloke, was it? Oh, an old bloke, mate. An old bloke I wouldn't like to fight in the way, <laughs> no, Listen, top class again. I, I look up Nanito Donaire so much, it's unbelievable. I've been watching him since I'm in, it's literally since I'm in nappies. So um, I look up to someone like him, he's an idol to the game, isn't he? Uh, I think he's probably. Pff, should be the top five greatest fighters that of all time, I think. Of all time, I think Nanita Denner is the top five greatest fighters of all time. And then domestically, we had Liam Davis, um, who was fighting the other night in Telford, and, and he could not stop calling you out to everyone who was interviewing him. The, everyone, I'm the money bags. So I'm like the one with the, with the tag at my back, so they're all going to call me out looking for an opportunity. But when my, uh, as I said to you already, when my time comes and, uh, and, and the fight makes sense, and there's some normal money involved and a proper title involved, not Mickey Mouse titles. I'll beat every single one of them. And before all that, back to business, July the 10th. Um, you're looking, I've got to say, in, in good shape. You feeling good? Feeling good, punching hard, looking good especially as well. Of course. Right? <laughs> and, and, and for, the, you know, for all the people who might be watching or might be thinking about watching, why should they turn on BT Sport on July the 10th? Tune in just to watch one of the most exciting bantamweights there is. For a big knockout. Nice I'm coming for the KO, coming for the KO.